Hey, what's up everyone? John here with Web Dev for You, here to help you build awesome websites without code in Webflow. So today I'm starting a new video series. It's called Answering Comments, and it's where I go over my previous videos and I answer any questions that were left in the comment section. Uh, so this is just a way for me to kind of reach back out to the community and help with any Webflow related questions and any questions related to the YouTube videos or the videos that I release. So the first uh, comment here that I'm gonna go over in the in this series is this one by Lambus Stratodacus. And it's, it's in reference to the three must know layout tips in Webflow video I just recently released. So the question is, uh, he wrote great. In layout two, how can you make the images not just to flex, but also to scale when mouse hover. So that's in reference to uh, this section here that I went over in that video. So it looks like he's looking to have the, the image zoom in or scale in as well when we hover. Uh, so I will go over how to do that in this video tutorial, how I would go about doing this. Um, I will say I do think it might be too much animation if we have the images moving like this and zooming in, but we'll try it and we'll see how it looks. So let's go ahead and jump right into Webflow and I'll showcase how I would create that type of uh, animation in Webflow. So I'll go ahead and recreate that section uh, that I went over in the video. So let's just go ahead and start with a section and I'll call this flex section because we're gonna add some flex, or actually we'll just call it, uh, yeah, flex section is fine because we're gonna be using Flexbox. Then I'll give it a min height of 100 VH and I'll go ahead and rename it to just section because it doesn't really matter if this section is flex or not. But um, I'll set the display setting to flex here, center, center, and we'll give it a, we'll add a div block. We'll call this, um, you know what, let's just, yeah, okay, flex container, and we'll just do flex section. Okay, cool. So we have the flex container, and I'll go ahead and give it a max width of 1440 and we'll make it 100%. Then I'll add a div block in here and I'll call this flex wrapper. We'll also give this a uh, flex setting of flex. We'll say horizontal, uh, align stretch, and justify start. Then I'll go ahead and add a div block in here and we'll call this flex item. And we'll say grow if possible. And we'll give it a height of 500 pixels. Okay, so I just have to copy this four times and perfect. Then we'll give it a border radius of, I think it was 24. I gave it a border radius of 24. And we'll go ahead and add those background images. So I'll add an image, choose image. We'll choose this one, set it to cover, center, and I'll, I don't need it to be tiled. Then we'll say two for this one. And we'll change the background image. Give this a combo class of three. And then choose image change that image and then the fourth one give it a combo class of four and then I'll change the image here all right great and then I'll just give some margin to the left and the right maybe 20 pixels on the left and the right and there we have <clears throat> our flex element so yeah the reason I was just kind of contemplating giving this uh, class name of flex section is because I didn't want to confuse anyone watching like you know giving it a class name of flex will affect the flex properties I could give this any name and then just change the display setting. The, the flex is just so that I can stay organized and have all the components in this, uh, in this section with a, a keyword of flex because I'm showcasing Flexbox. Hopefully that made sense. I just don't wanna confuse with the class names there. But yeah, anywho, let's go ahead and add the, uh, the animation. So we'll select the flex item, go to hover, and I'll say here, I'll go to the three dots and I'll grow it to two and perfect. Then I'll go to the none state and go to transitions right down here and we'll go to flex and we'll give it a duration of 300 milliseconds. So that gives us that effect where we have the, uh, the image and it kind of does scale in already because the image is getting bigger but we can make it, the scale in even more pronounced. And I think this is what, um, what Lambus is referencing. So in order to do this, we actually need to 
set the flex item to a position of relative and the overflow of hidden. And then inside of the flex item, we need to add a div block, set it to position absolute and full, okay? And now I'm going to, for the flex item, I'm actually gonna remove the background image. So all the background images are removed and I'm gonna add the background image to this div block we added. So I'm gonna call this flex image and I'll go ahead and add the image to this div block. So I'll choose the image and set it again, cover and center. Okay, perfect. So I'll go ahead and let me just delete. I can remove the combo class from all of these because we don't need the combo class to the flex item now. And then I can just copy and paste the flex image inside of each flex item. And then we want to apply the combo class to the flex image and then change the image here. Uh, so this, this will make sense in a sec after I've changed all the images. And there we go. So now the flex item, the it, the flex item has a div block flex image and we applied the background image to the flex image. So now we can add the interaction to the flex item. So when we hover the flex item, we can do something to the flex image. So with flex item selected, I'll go to interactions, click the plus, I'll say on mouse hover, we'll start an animation, I'll click the plus and I'll say flex item hover in. Then I'll select the flex image, click the plus and we'll scale it let's say 1.5 and we'll set it as the initial state and we'll also rotate it. So let's rotate it 30 degrees on the Z axis. So it tilts 30 degrees and we'll also set it as the initial state. And then I'll just select these two, right click and duplicate. And then I'll scale it back on the X, I'll scale it 1.2 on the X and the Y, and then rotate back to zero. So initially it's scaled in, but then we'll scale it out. So let's see how that looks. Doesn't look great, and it needs to be quick. It needs to be the same speed as the transition, which is 300 milliseconds. So this needs to be 0.3 for the duration, and the easing needs to be ease, okay? All right, so that doesn't look great, but we do have to set the scale to higher than 1.5 because the image is getting cropped. So it needs to be really zoomed in and then something like that. So as you can see, it doesn't, it doesn't look great because the image is expanding and also rotating at the same time. So maybe if we change the duration here to, I don't know, 0.6, double, the speed no still looks still doesn't look great so I, yeah I don't know if I like this this effect um, it feels too jittery and you know I'm sure we could mess with it so it looks better but and maybe maybe the scale could be less pronounced so if we scaled it to hmm we scaled it down to 1.5. Yeah, let's let's try that. We I'll mess with that in a second. So let's add an, a hover out animation. I'll duplicate this. And I'll say flex item hover out. And I'll delete these two and then I'll just scale it back to 1.8 and rotate it back to 30. So on hover in, it does that, hover out, it goes back. All right, it might even be better if we didn't have the rotation. No, it doesn't, doesn't look quite, quite good there. Yeah, I, I guess that could work. Let's try it with the other ones and I'll just say, uh, right for the trigger settings, I'll say class. So any class with the flex item will have this animation applied. And then because we're affecting the children uh, or affecting the class and only children with this class, it's gonna affect all the images. So if I preview, 
and that's actually kind of cool. I don't mind that at all. Uh, so there you go, Lambdas. Uh, hopefully that made sense what I just did. So I'll just recap really quick what I did here. So we added the section, I added a container uh, just to keep things kind of centered in the site. Then I added a flex wrapper. Um, I could have added it to the container, all these settings, but I kind of wanted to add a wrapper in case I wanted to add more elements per se to the container. So I added a, fly, a flex wrapper, we added a flex item, and then we gave it a grow if possible setting. So to the flex wrapper, we set it to flex, uh, horizontal, align, uh, stretch, justify start. The flex item, we said grow if possible. We copied and pasted four times. And then to the flex item, we gave it the properties of position relative and overflow hidden so that we could add a flex image inside of it. So then we added another div block with flex image. And then we added the background image to the flex image. And then we selected the flex item and added the animation. So when we hover over the flex item, we're affecting the flex image. And we made sure that we have class selected here so that our animation was affecting all the images. And for hover in, we just scaled it up to 1.8, rotated it 30 degrees on the Z axis, then scaled it down back to 1.5 and then rotated it back to zero. On hover out, we duplicated it and just reset the animation. So reset it back to 1.8 on scale and rotated it back to 30 on uh, the, the Z axis. So on hover in, we also, yeah, we scaled it to 1.5 and rotated it to zero. All right, so I'll publish and uh, then we'll preview. And that's how we do that. So yeah, I'd say the main takeaway from this is placing the flex image inside of the flex item and making sure the flex item is positioned relative and overflow of hidden. And then the flex image is absolute and full. And then you can kind of animate the image inside of the flex item. You know, you can scale it, rotate it, and it won't uh, go out of the bounds of the flex item. Again, because of this overflow hidden property here. All right, so hopefully that answers the question. Um, again, it's not it's not bad. The animation's not bad, but we already do have quite a bit of animation with the panels kind of growing. I, I think this might be enough here because it does scale a bit when we hover because the image is getting bigger. Uh, but here we're having a rotation and um, kind of scale animation. So it might be a lot, but depends what you're going for or if you have a specific idea in mind. Uh, so hopefully that helps Lambdas. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions. And again, if you do have questions, leave them in the comments. I'm not gonna say I'm gonna answer every single question that comes up, but if there's a question that I feel I can convey or communicate or, or uh, go over and, and communicate the idea effectively and, and kind of showcase how to do something in Webflow, I'm more than happy to. So uh, yeah, this is the Answering Comments series. Uh, thanks for watching. And yeah, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I could possibly go over it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you.